Another pretty nice week of Supercoach. Scored 2,224, moved into the top 10k. Things went our way this round. Avoided some of the bad luck, such as Darcy Cameron's injury and LDU being a lay out. Brutal luck for those who traded one or both of them in. That is the cruel part of Supercoach. Injury luck, we know about it all too well. Super unfortunate, although for those who tried to get on the app to reverse the LDU trade and the app wasn't working, that's really not fair. But anyway, let's go through the team. In defense, Jordan Dawson, showdown medalist. A debatable one, but I don't really care. Him scoring well is all that matters, and he did just that. He had 62% CBAs, so that was interesting. Played up the ground a lot more. In their post-game presser, he said they thought it was a good idea for him to be up around the ball more so he could set up his teammates from higher up the ground. So we'll see how that role looks for him moving forward. He only had the 18 touches, but was clearly impactful. Still think he plays his best footy from behind the ball, so hopefully this role won't impact his scoring too much. Dacos, ultimate seagull. Good to not have to stress about him not being in the team anymore. Jimby is an absolute beast. Continues to be a tackle machine. What a player. Liam Jones, he's scraping together his 60s to 70s. It's a bit of a hard watch when he's not getting involved at all, but such is the role he's playing. McKenna, not as good as the previous two weeks, but still found a fair bit of it, so that's fine. Cowan didn't watch the game, but heard he was pretty lucky to get the 51. So I guess we'll take it. Decided not to take the risk with the constable loop, so we lost out on 18 points there, but it is what it is. Midfield, Clary, I love you, that's all I have to say. Started at a touch under 700k and he's gone up in price, so that sums up how good he's been to start the season. Laird, it was looking a bit underwhelming after three quarters, but he made his way up to 114. Hopefully he can start stringing together some of those high ceiling scores we saw last season. Because that's why we picked him at top price. Bont, he was looking like best on ground at half time. But a brutal second half from him. A turnover machine. So in the end it was an unfortunate score for Bont. Setterfield, that's fine. We're not going to get those massive scores every week. We picked him as a mid-pricer to make money and he's doing just that still getting plenty of opportunity and playing a good role that's what we want to see Warple just not his day CBAs were similar to last round but still down on round one saw him up forward a lot yeah just couldn't find the footy nearly as much as the first two weeks did think he deserved a little more than a 45, but yeah, it was a quiet one for Warple. Hopper didn't play due to injury, but stayed on field because of Baker's 95. Great game from him. It's always nice when a bench option comes through when you need them to. Ashcroft, solid. McKenzie bounced back, which is great to see. Noah Long, really didn't expect these types of scores from him, but well done. And Davey will take that from him. In the rocks, we chucked the C on Sean Darcy, and he delivered. Took advantage of the Bailey Williams matchup. But gee, it really could have been at least a 150 plus. He was on 92 at the half. So, in a way, it was a bit of an underwhelming 132, but still a great captain score nonetheless. And good to see him bounce back. He really needed to, especially with the matchup he had. I did have the C on Clary for a bit, but my gut was saying Darcy, so I switched it. Lost out on some points there, but that's fine. Marshall, disappointing. 
And the forward line, Dunkley played a solid game against his old side. Rosie very good. Taranto, he'll find plenty of it. Ball use is another story, but we'll take a 112. Goulden didn't find as much of the footy as he usually does. His CBAs were down. Looking at the numbers, those CBAs probably went to Mills. He was at 69% from being in the 30s the first two rounds. But we'll take an 85 from a down game. Zeeble we traded in. He was underwhelming, but still played the role we wanted to see. So it's fine. Sheasel is unreal. We used a boost to go Filippo to Chandler. Definitely worth it. Another great game from Chandler. Gonna make a lot of cash and looking like a reliable on-field option as well. And green, he'll be a slow burn, but as long as he plays, that's fine. For trades this week, we don't have to make any, but I'm thinking of doing one to help with the team's flexibility in terms of on-field rookies. I'm not particularly comfortable with this D6 setup now that Constable's been dropped and no guarantee to come back. Don't really want to field either Cowan or Wilmot, even though Wilmot showed some great signs in the fourth quarter against the Dogs. I'd rather field Chandler instead of both, or just have the option to field any of these bench guys with DPP. So what I'm thinking is Warple out, that 45 will stunt his cash growth for the next couple of weeks. Probably early, but he is, I think, the most expendable to make this work. Constable will go into the mids. And I'm going to bring in Will Day. He's looking like a star in that Hawks midfield, very composed with the footy, and he's finding plenty of it. CBAs have gone up the past couple of weeks. That's probably screwed with Warple a little bit, but he should be a quick cash grab. Hopefully he keeps the role and continues to play well in it. But I like this trade for, as I said, team flexibility. Should help my on-field, at least I hope. And this will leave me with 64k in the bank. I have considered trading out Liam Jones as well, but I think we'll just stick with him and hope he can continue to scrape out those 60s or 70s. And that 5 is out of his rolling average, so that helps. So we'll do Warple today, leaving me with 64.7k in the bank. So as of right now, this will be the team heading into round 4. Done some DPP swings to get Chandler on field, so Gordon's in the mids, Davey on the forward bench. I'm liking how this looks. feel like we've got a solid foundation to attack upgrade season in the next week or two. Captains... We'll go Oliver, captain for sure. I know his record against West Coast isn't great, but the way he's going right now, it's going to be tough to contain. In the VC, either Bont or Laird. Bont against Richmond, Laird against Frio. Tough one. We'll go Laird. Frio's midfield's a little out of sorts right now. Better against West Coast, but... I feel like Laird can have a good one against them at home. So we'll stick with that. But anyway, that will do it. Hopefully you all avoided at least some of the carnage. Good luck to you all for round four and see you in the next one.